Welcome to Spirit Speak, exploring the afterlife with Connie and Barry Strom. Your hosts are here to speak the words of the spirits and answer your questions. Now, here are Connie and Barry. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Spirit Speak, exploring the afterlife. I'm Barry Strom, your host. Our goal, as always, is to educate as many people as possible about the afterlife. All of us are going to face the afterlife at some time. And if you know what you're looking at, we're hoping you will not fear it. We currently have over 480 videos on our YouTube channel covering all aspects of the paranormal and of the afterlife. Our channel's in my name, Barry Strom. And this is a very important show today, so we're not going to have any time to take calls. I'm Connie Strom, your co-host. Last week, we investigated reincarnation in prior lives. We channeled much information and took calls where we investigated the prior lives of some of our listeners. The show is available in the Voice America archives and on our YouTube channel. Today, we're going to investigate the medium in which souls reside when they're not in their incarnate form. Christians call it heaven, Muslims refer to it as paradise, and many even refer to it as the ethereal. Atheists don't believe in the afterlife, so to them, this divin dimension does not exist. We're currently go going to channel the multiple spirits that will speak of heaven and hopefully will bring some clarity to that mysterious dimension. We'll begin by asking questions of our master guide, Laura. Then we'll speak with St. Peter the Disciple to learn how Jesus described heaven to the people. And then Steve Jobs, the founder of the Apple Corporation. He was an agnostic, and we'll find out about his passing in the final segment. We will channel Jesus himself, and he'll tell us about heaven. Okay, we're going to begin the show today with a disclaimer, because many people will be offended by us speaking of the dimension that we believe is heaven or know is heaven. So the opinions or statements voiced on our show are the channeled words of the spirits and do not necessarily reflect our opinions, those of the Voice American Network, or of our sponsors. Okay, we're going to begin by asking our master guide, Laura, a few questions to lay the foundation of information about heaven for our right. listeners. Laura, welcome. Uh, is heaven a single dimension? And if it's not, how many dimensions are there? That can be a little bit of a tricky question to answer. Heaven is not just a single dimension. There are many dimensions to heaven and there are also many realms to heaven if you refer to a realm or layer of heaven then there are seven a soul is sent back to learn lessons that soul must progress through heaven the seventh level is the highest and that is the level of god it takes many, many lifetimes and many lessons learned in order for a soul to advance to be into the seventh level. The first level is not a great level to be in. You see, every soul that dies has to go somewhere. There are the seven levels, and there's also a lower level. The lowest level which you might think of as the, the if, if you take the lowest level into consideration, there would be eight levels. When your soul is sent to the lowest level, it is because it has done much evil in its lives. That is where the evils of the, of the evil are sent. That's where the Hitlers, the Stalins, all the people that were so evil during their lifetimes. The, that level is a level of nothingness. The soul must contemplate what it did. It must consider that it has to make up for all of the problems that it created. And when God decides that the soul, that evil soul understands that it will do better, he allows it to into the first level. That is a level that has many souls in it, 
they can communicate, they can talk, but that's about all they can do in that first level. As they live lives, as they pay the karma for what they've done, then they're allowed to advance. It's a long way to the seventh level. It is possible that an individual such as a Hitler can go from the highest level to the lowest because they do so much evil. There are also multiple dimensions other than realms. As you cross those dimensions, then you're allowed to, your soul can travel long distances and there's much that it can do. So actually, the construction of heaven is is quite complex. So we've heard. Is there time in heaven? There is no time as you understand it in heaven. Time is a concept that humans have here on your planet. Once you're in heaven, there is no time. You live in an instant. Your soul, if it's in upper levels, can see times past, can see time future. There are many things that the soul can do if it is in an upper level. A soul in the first in the first level has no ability to see forward or backwards. Time is a difficult concept. I know that you've channeled on other shows about it. And we've told you to think of it in terms of time being a spiral where you can pierce different levels of the spiral where on your, on your planet earth, you have three dimensions and time is basically a straight line there. You really won't understand the concept of time until you return to return to heaven. Will you describe what the soul can do in the different levels? In the first level, souls basically can just converse with each other. As they progress, the soul has the ability to travel to a level which is lower. For instance, if you're in the fourth level, then you have the ability to travel to the third, second, or first level to visit souls that are there. What you don't have is the ability to travel to higher levels. You can never go to an advanced level, but you can always travel to a lower one. The When you are in the higher levels, such as the fifth, you can travel to visit anyone in a lower level. You can move around freely. If you think of where you want to be, then your soul will be there. You will be restricted to, to traveling on, a sing, on your single planet. But you will have much freedom. It will be a beautiful place. You will have intense colors. You will be able to do many, many things. When you're in the seventh level, you have almost an unlimited ability. You can visit other planets because the other planets and distances become dimensional for you in that level. You will be with the highest of souls to converse with. The seventh level is where individuals that have served God the most reside. It is the level that people truly want to try to obtain. 
Yeah, you've answered all my questions pretty much. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Um, is there anything more you can do to describe the lower level? And there's just so little there that you can't. <laughs> it is, I, as I said earlier, it's a place of nothingness. Think about being in the darkest room where you cannot see anything. You cannot hear anything. All you are aware of are your own thoughts. That can be terrifying for a human. And the thought of having your soul assigned there should be terrifying for any soul. It is truly not a place where you want to be. How is access gained to the different levels? Access is gained to the different levels by learning lessons. Each time that you return, you're given a life plan. Your guides have put together that life plan and they understand the lessons that your soul needs to learn. Each time that you come back, you will have a different life plan. And your guides will help assist you in following that. Now you have free will when you return so that you can decide if you, you can make a decision that you want to do other, that you want to do exactly what you want to do. Many people choose evil over goodness. When you make a decision to follow evil in your life, you have definitely varied from your life plan. A life plan never has evil in it. Now, all of us over here understand that humans will vary from that plan. We understand over here that all humans will do things that are contrary to the will of God. That is expected. What is expected is that you return to doing good. When you, when you pray, you can ask your guides, your angels, God himself, to help guide you and make correct decisions. We find that people don't believe in God, obviously don't pray, so they don't ask for help. And when they don't receive help, they're on their own. People that choose evil are truly on their own. And when they return, their souls will be judged by their guides accordingly. Depending on how they lived those evil lives and what they did, they will be assigned to lower levels. It is possible that a soul can make so many bad decisions that it can erase the good that it did for maybe a thousand lifetimes. Well, uh, so is it our guides that makes the decision on what level a human soul is assigned? Basically, but they'll confer with angels and perhaps even God will decide to become involved in the decision making. Hey, is it possible for a soul to move between planets? And if so, how's that possible? The distances are quite huge. The dimension in which you live has huge distances. You live in a three-dimensional world. Heaven is multidimensional. So, and this is impossible for the human soul to comprehend. It is in those dimensions, distances are diminished. If and so only souls in the upper levels are capable of taking advantage of those dimensions. If a soul is in the upper 
levels, then it can decide that it is possible to travel these large distances. These souls can also decide to reincarnate on other planets. Okay, is there anything else you'd like to tell us about heaven? Heaven is indescribable. There is so many there are so many things going on over here that it is impossible for humans to understand. Humans have only evolved to a certain point of understanding. There are gaps in their understanding that prevent them from seeing and understanding what we do over here. Humans live in a three-dimensional world. Over here, we have many, many different dimensions. Just the same as the creature you call a Bigfoot has the ability to move between dimensions. They live in a four-dimension world where humans live in a three-dimension world so they can disappear into that dimension. There's no way a human can figure out what takes place. Now imagine that you're in heaven and perhaps you have 20 different dimensions. So you see how complicated the concept of heaven becomes. But heaven is truly a wonderful place. It is exactly what you, we tell you it is. So trust me when I tell you that it's worth living a good life so that you can advance in the realms of heaven when you return home. So thank you for letting me speak today, and I know you have a lot to do, so thank you so much. Thank you, Laura. Okay, let's take a short break. We're going to be back in two minutes, and when we return, we're going to talk with St. Peter and Steve Jobs. Connie and Barry will be back after a few words from our sponsors. Follow Voice America at Facebook.com forward slash Voice America for juicy updates from your favorite radio shows and podcasts. Is death the end of the journey of the soul or a time of new beginnings? Is there proof of an afterlife? What would historic figures say if they lived today? Psychic and channeler Barry Strom uses his gift of spirit communication to answer these questions and explore all aspects of the hereafter. Have all the information necessary not to fear life's final journey. Tune in to Spirit Speak, exploring the afterlife with Connie and Barry Strom. Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Variety Channel. Voice America programs are now available on your favorite connected device, including Amazon, Alexa, and Google Home. Through streams with Apple Podcasts, TuneIn, and iHeartRadio, listening to your favorite show is as easy as saying the show name followed by the word podcast. Hey, Alexa, play Finding Your Frequency podcast. If that doesn't work, try adding on TuneIn or on iHeartRadio or on Apple Podcasts. Psychic and author Barry Strom has now published nine books dealing with supernatural subject from ghosts to aliens. His most recent books, Messages of God and Messages of the Prophet Muhammad for a Modern World, bring you the channeled messages of the founders of Christianity and Islam. Their words are intended to guide their followers through these modern times. These books are available in softcover and ebook on Amazon.com. Signed copies of all of Strom's books are available on his website, www.barrystrom.com. The Internet's number one talk station. Number one talk station. VoiceAmerica.com. Welcome. 
Welcome back to Spirit Speak, exploring the afterlife. Here are your hosts, Connie and Barry Strom. Hey, welcome back, everybody, and thank you for tuning in. We're now going to channel with the spirit of St. Peter the Disciple. He was present when Jesus walked the earth, and we're going to ask him some questions about what Jesus told the people about heaven. Thank you for coming back, Peter. Uh, Would you please describe heaven for us? I was listening as your guide, Laura, described heaven. And she did a very good job of it. Heaven is impossible to describe. Just as, she, as, just as she told you, human understanding cannot comprehend. I have been blessed to serve God many, many times in my past lives. And for that, he chose me to return with him when he when he came back in the form of Jesus and Jesus walked the earth i was honored to be with him i did not realize what heaven was when i was with him you see when you return for a life plan your mind is wipe free. You return as a baby. You know nothing. So the same was for me when I returned in that lifetime. That was the same for all of the other disciples that joined Jesus. But we had all served him in other lifetimes. And we all had the ability to listen to him and to learn from him. So all that we knew of heaven was what we learned just the same as what you know of heaven is what you're learning. We had the wonderful opportunity to be with Jesus. He told us what he thought we could understand about heaven. But I think that Lord did a fine job of describing it. She always does. She's great in everything. So you don't have anything to add about the seventh level of heaven? The seventh level is being close to God. We we get to interact with his energy up here, and he will ask us to serve. He will ask individuals to return, and he will try to utilize all of the souls in the seventh level to do the mo- to do things that will influence individuals that have returned in incarnate lives when jesus walked the earth what did he tell the common person to which he spoke about heaven when jesus walked the earth he spoke to individuals that were poor they were fishermen carpenters they were trying to raise their families they were uneducated their level of understanding was far below the level of understanding that you're capable of today he told them that heaven was a wonderful place he told them that if they lived a good life they would join him Jesus told the people that when he died, he would go to this wonderful place. He told them that he would be there and he would be waiting for them. He told the people that how they lived this life would determine whether or not they joined him in heaven. You see, he had to speak in a manner that people understood. There were no schools then. There were only the rich would be able to write. Only those that had wealth and could afford tutors would have access 
to different types of learning. And what was taught in those days was basically the understandings of those that had gone before, such as the Greeks. They were the great philosophers. So Jesus had to keep it as simple as possible. He would convince people by performing miracles. He would convince people by allowing them to speak with him, to feel his incredible energies. Jesus could motivate people like no one else. After all, he was God incarnate. But he simply referred to heaven as this wonderful place where they would, where they would reside forever, where there would be no pain and no suffering. He spoke of the soul as a living organism, that that soul would live on, even though their body would pass. He spoke very simply. What did he tell the disciples about heaven? He spoke to us in a little more detail. He told us that heaven was truly a wondrous place. He described a place that would be would perhaps have streets of gold. He had to tie, he had to discuss heaven in terms of what we understood. We would see the rich have mansions. So he would tell us that there were many mansions in heaven. But keep in mind his point of reference was so much different historically than what it would be today. What would you tell our listeners about heaven? I would tell them that it's well worth living a good life, controlling anger, and doing help helping others whenever they have the opportunity, using their wealth to do good. I would tell them that no matter how intelligent the people think they are today, there is absolutely no way that they can ever comprehend heaven. When you continued your ministry after the crucifixion of Jesus, what did you tell the people? I simply told them that heaven was beautiful beyond their imagination, that they would, that their soul would have everlasting life that they would join me, they would join Jesus, that in order to do that, they had to live a good life. I kept my messages as simple as possible, and I did what I could do. Hey, Peter, do you have a final message for our listeners? I would thank them for allowing me to come through today. I know that Steve is here waiting to speak. I know that he did things in his life that were a little different. And I know that he's going to bring a different perspective. So simply do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Live a good life. And know that there is absolutely no doubt that heaven exists. When your time of passing comes, you will fully realize that. So thank you. Thank you, Peter. Mr. Jobs, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, would you like to begin? Oh, let's say, I'm sorry. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, you were an agnostic in life, weren't you? Yes, I was. I was very, very busy with my business life. And I felt that much of what was written in the Bible was impossible to understand. I had never truly seen proof, and you will never truly see proof. The closest that I, be I came was 
trying to attend various churches. Their messages never seemed to me to be believable. I was so devoted to my business. I wanted to do well. I wanted to succeed. I wanted I wanted to do what most humans want. I was full of indecision when it came to believing in God. I did not see any way that it could be proven. I didn't realize that the key to believing in God was faith. I was very technically oriented, and it led me away. I could not believe or disbelieve. Did you have any belief in the possibility of an afterlife? I thought that there was a distinct possibility. I knew that many people had a firm belief in it. I knew that many people were, had seen ghosts, that there was a spirit presence. I wasn't sure how to tie that spirit presence into a true afterlife. I, I guess, I guess I should have been a lot smarter. Uh, you're smart. You're just too busy, I think. In life, did you ever attempt to lead individuals away from God? I tried not to do that. I wanted people to make up their own mind. I did I did tell individuals why I couldn't prove the existence of God in my mind, but I never actively tried to tell people that God did not exist and lead them away from believing in him. Mr. Jobs, when you passed, you said, oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow. Would you tell us what happened and what you saw? As I approached my death, I was very fearful. I actually thought that it would simply be the end. I felt that it was going to just simply go to nothing. As I, find, I took my final breath, I started to see all of these miraculous things. I saw great color. I saw intense beauty. I saw an angel. I saw things that I absolutely never comprehended could it possibly exist. And you're correct. My final words were, oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow. And then my soul passed from my body. Once my soul passed, I started to become aware that my family members, individuals that were deceased, were around me. I, I was overwhelmed. Your soul energy is truly forever. When my soul energy passed from my body, I realized the mistakes that I had made in my life. I was escorted through this veil-like tunnel. There was light at the end of it. My family members were with me an angel told me that everything was going to be fine. They took me and 
tried to help me adapt. All of a sudden, I found that I was looking down at the room. I could see my family. They were crying. They knew that my soul had left. What they didn't know was that I had passed into this absolutely incredible place. I guess that there's no way that I can really describe what it's like. When each person passes, it's going to be a unique experience for them. I have watched others leave the life plane. It is amazing how what they see is what they expect to see. Sometimes people see a tunnel. Sometimes they simply see a, a city or a floral scene. The colors over here are incredibly brilliant. It is a place of beauty and it is not something that I can truly describe for you. What level are you on? I'm actually on the sixth level. Since I did not speak against God and try to lead others, I had a very good judgment. I could have done better, but I did help many people. I helped my employees. And I brought a technology to individuals that would help them greatly in their lives. So I had a very, very good review. Okay, do you have a final message for our listeners? I would only tell the listeners that they need to believe in heaven, they need to believe in God, and they need to understand that their soul truly will pass into another dimension. They will be utterly amazed. They will see beauty beyond their wildest belief, and they will see things that can never describe. Thank you so much for taking some time with us. Okay, let's take another short break. And when we come back, we're going to channel with Jesus, and he will speak of heaven. Connie and Barry will be back after a few words from our sponsors. A little birdie told me Voice America is on Twitter. Follow us at Voice America TRN. Psychic and author Barry Strom has now published nine books dealing with supernatural subject from ghosts to aliens. His most recent books, Messages of God and Messages of the Prophet Muhammad for a Modern World, bring you the channeled messages of the founders of Christianity and Islam. Their words are intended to guide their followers through these modern times. These books are available in softcover and ebook on Amazon.com. Signed copies of all of Strom's books are available on his website, www.barrystrom.com. Voice America is on LinkedIn. Connect with us today. Is death the end of the journey of the soul or a time of new beginnings? Is there proof of an afterlife? What would historic figures say if they lived today? Psychic and channeler Barry Strom uses his gift of spirit communication to answer these questions and explore all aspects of the hereafter. Have all the information necessary not to fear life's final journey. Tune in to Spirit Speak, exploring the afterlife with Connie and Barry Strom. Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Variety Channel. Streaming live, the leader in Internet talk radio, voiceamerica.com. Welcome back to Spirit Speak, exploring the afterlife. Have a question for Barry or their guests? Join us on the show at 866-472-5788. 
That's 866-472-5788. Now, back to the show. Welcome back, everybody, and thank you for listening. Now, I know that there's many people out there saying that there's absolutely no way that I can speak the words of, of Jesus. Well, I have been given an incredible gift by God, and I've been trying to bring his words to the people for many, many years now. Each Wednesday morning, I channel a podcast, and its name is A Weekly Message from Jesus. We've been doing this for over three years, and all of his messages are on our YouTube channel as well. I've published 60 of his messages in book form. It's called Messages of God for a Modern World. It's available on Amazon. So, I truly can speak his words, and I know that our Father is with us, and he is now going to speak to us about heaven. Hello, everyone. Yes, I truly understand that many of you out there are doubting that you're truly hearing my words. I asked Barry to return so that he could speak, so that he could speak the words of all of my disciples, my followers, my angels, and to speak my words. You see, my words are very, very simple. Often the words that are attributed to me in the written works are very complicated. I sent Barry and Connie back to bring words to listeners about the true beauty of heaven. You see, humans need to understand that the foundation of their lives is faith. You have to believe in me. You have to believe in heaven. You have to believe that the soul has everlasting life, which it does. You see, your soul has been around for many thousands of years. It's been along around for times way beyond your comprehension. It has been many places. It has learned many lessons. But you see, the human soul is quite frail. It tends to use its free will to follow energies other than the ones of which we speak. Heaven is your reward. Heaven is the ultimate gift that I could give to human souls. I want you to think of it as a gift because that is what it is. You see, the soul could just simply live a single life and then vanish and then perhaps be replaced by another soul that lives a single life and vanish. But I want the human soul to be able to advance and to be rewarded for helping others, for showing love, for doing all of the things of which I speak. Heaven is truly indescribable and not understandable for the human soul. Once you return, your memories come back from your prior lives, and you know. You know why you chose that life, and you know what you did right and what you did wrong. You see... Heaven, heaven is the ultimate reward. You must have faith that it exists. I'm not going to prove it to you. 
I'm going to tell you about it. I'm going to speak of all that have come be- that have gone before you to this place. I'm going to tell you that your family members that have left before you are here. I'm going to tell you that they are finding a comfort and happiness beyond anything of your comprehension. Heaven, heaven is what you want it to be. Heaven is the fulfillment of what you believe your greatest desire should be. Heaven is paradise. It is the greatest place that you are capable of comprehending. You see, I could prove this to you. I could do many things. But I need you to have faith. You see, that faith will lead you to living a good life. If you have faith that you can obtain the greatest experience that is comprehensible for you, then that faith should be the incentive that you need to live the life that I want you to live. And if you live that life, then you will know for sure that your rewards will truly be in heaven. What other reward could there be when your soul passes from your body? You see, those that don't believe in me feel that it is the end. I want you to feel that when your soul passes from your body, that it is truly the beginning. Because your soul enters my heaven, and from that time on, it will live forever. It may choose to remain where where it was when it left on its incarnate life. It may be that the realm that it is in is quite satisfactory. For it. Your soul may live in a realm where all your family members exist. All of those that have returned before. You will find souls that you never knew that participated in your prior lives. Depending what level you are in, you will find that you have freedoms beyond anything that you could ever comprehend. You can visit with the greatest souls that ever lived. Imagine being able to speak with the great philosophers, the Platos, the Socrates. Imagine being able to gaze into the future to see what will be coming. You see, heaven. Heaven is a concept. It is a concept for the mind that must be accepted. You don't have to believe in heaven. You don't have to believe in me. You see, that's the real beauty of free will. I love all of you, whether you believe in me or not. I love all of you, whether you believe your soul will simply pass from your body into a nothingness, or whether it will proceed into heaven. 
you really have no control over the passing of your soul. What you have control over is how it will be judged, where it will be located in my heaven, and where it will reside for eternity. Your human life is but a blink in the eye of the light time of a soul. A human life is incredibly short. I planned it that way. I want you to be able to return and establish another life plan and be given the opportunity to advance in my realms. Many people make bad decisions with their lives. They will be given a second chance. Do not put your soul in a position that it will need to live many, many lifetimes to learn the lessons that you failed to learn in this life. I want to thank you so much for allowing me to speak today. Heaven, I can't describe it for you. Heaven is what you want it to be, and it will be what you, what you want if you follow my words. Simply use common sense in your life. Live a good life. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. Do not show anger. Do not show hatred. Do not take the lives of others. Do not steal. It's all common sense. These are all things that you do not want to happen to you. So thank you for listening to me today. I hope that, first of all, you believe that you have truly heard the words of God. And second, I hope that you follow them. So I bless all of you that are listening. Goodbye. Okay, so I can't tell you much more about heaven than that. Next week, we're going to explore the role music plays with the human personality and with their soul existence. We're going to begin by speaking with the archangel Sandolphin. She's the angel of music as well as other duties, and then we're going to channel with the spirits of Beethoven and Mozart, two of the greatest classical composers of all times. Think about buying my book, Messages of God for a Modern World. I think that you will enjoy it. It will give you guidance. And I know that it will bring you thoughts and messages that will help you believe and have faith. I would also like to thank you all for joining us, joining us on the Voice America Variety Radio Network this morning. Please give us a thumbs up and tell your friends about our show. If you'd like to see more of the channelings, as we said before, we've got over 480 videos covering all aspects of the afterlife on the YouTube channel, which is in the name of Barry Strom. I want to thank all of you that tune in. I hope that you tell your friends about our show. I try to bring a non-denominational message to everybody. You see, it's impossible for us to teach you about the afterlife without speaking of a single deity. They go hand in hand. So I want to thank you again. Please join us Tuesday mornings, 9 a.m. Pacific time on the Voice America Variety Network. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Spirit Speak, exploring the afterlife with Connie and Barry Strom. Tune in next week for another informative and inspiring episode on the Voice America Variety Channel at 9 a.m. Pacific Time.
Thank you.